All right, this is going to be the uh, continuation of the uh, curve sketching problem. Um, so I think we just finished off uh, figuring out where the function's increasing, decreasing. Again, that helped us find local maximums and minimums. Part G said you want to figure out the concavity and any inflection points. It's almost an exact repeat of what you did in, in step F. but So now we have to take the derivative of the first derivative. So again, it says you get the bottom part times the derivative of the top, which will just be negative 1, minus the top part times the derivative of the bottom part, all over the bottom part squared. All right, so again, you're going to want to clean this up. So the top, it looks like you get negative x cubed. Again, if you FOIL out, um, you'll get 2 times 3x squared, which is going to give you 6x squared, but the negative is going to make it, well, negative 6x squared. If you distribute the negative x, you'll get negative 3x cubed, but then it'll become a positive 3x cubed. And the denominator, x cubed squared, will give us x to the 6. Remember, just multiply. Um, combine your like terms. It looks like we've got negative 1x cubed, positive 3x cubed. That's going to give us 2x cubed minus 6x squared over x to the 6. Just like our last problem, we'll factor out anything we can from the top. Mainly, I'm going to factor out an x squared. Um, it looks like we'll be left with 2x um, minus 6 over x to the 6th. And this will simply give us, we could even factor the 2 out, and then be left with x to the 4th. Okay, so that's what I got here for my second derivative. And again, now we basically just need to do the same thing that we did before. Um, we only call them critical numbers for the first derivative, but you still make this little sign chart for the second derivative and do the same thing you did a second ago. So I think what value will make the numerator 0? Well, how about x equals 3? What value would make the denominator 0? How about x equals 0? Same thing. Notice if we take a number between 0 and 3, maybe we can use 1. It looks like the numerator is going to be negative. The denominator is going to be positive. So the sign's negative, and that means it's concave down on that interval. If we take a number, say, smaller than 0, say negative 1, it looks like the numerator is going to be positive. The denominator will be positive. The sign is positive. That means the graph is going to be concave up on that, that interval. Um, take a number bigger than 3, say 4, the numerator will be positive. The denominator is always positive. So again, we're going to get positives, and that means it's going to be concave up on that interval. Um, again, an inflection point is a point on the graph where the concavity changes. Well, again, it looks like it changes concavity at 0, but you have to remind yourself that 0 is not even a point it's the function's undefined at zero, so that cannot be an inflection point. Um, so let's see. So the inflection point corresponds to the x coordinate of three. And again, if you think about the original function, x minus one over x squared, if you plug three in, what are we going to get out? It looks like two over 9. So it says our only inflection point will be at the point 3 comma 2 ninths. And now I think we have just about everything we need to sketch a nice little graph here. Let's see if we can't put it all together. So I was looking for one of my other pieces of paper where I had everything written down. So Ooh, these are long problems, and unfortunately, I think a rational function um, is maybe a touch one of the... They're not completely miserable. They're definitely long. Some of the other ones can be pretty tricky, I think. Um, you know, on a test or a quiz, I always ask people to do rational functions because they have vertical asymptotes, they have horizontal asymptotes, so you have to do limits. Um, to me, these are kind of good problems. So um, if you have curve sketching coming up on a test or a quiz, I would um, definitely study at least one or two rational functions, but obviously don't you know don't limit yourself to those. Um, okay, well we said y equals zero was a horizontal asymptote. 
Um, we said x equals 0 was a vertical asymptote, so there are those points. We said that at, at x equals 1, that was our x-intercept. Um, our local max was at 2 comma 1 fourth. So I'm going to put it up here a little bit. And then over here at 3 comma 2 ninths, we're going to have um, our inflection point. And let's see, now if we can't make everything, just, uh, just do what it needs to do. So um, we know that x equals 0 is a vertical asymptote. Notice if you start taking numbers that are, neg that are close to 0 but negative, um, what's going to happen? I mean, even take a number to the left of uh, 0, maybe plug in negative 4. It looks like you're going to get a negative number out. So our graph is definitely below um, the x-axis. Since there's no other x-intercepts, that means the function has to stay strictly below the x-axis so that I know that when it approaches this um, vertical asymptote of x equals 0, it's going to have to be decreasing there. And I'll just make it approach that horizontal asymptote. So notice we're trying to make it close to this line y equals 0, which makes it a horizontal asymptote. Our graph is concave down and decreasing, so I think that part should be OK. Um, it looks like our function was concave down from 0 to 3. The function was increasing up to 2, so I'm going to try to make it um, So I'm going to make it increasing up till 2. It's supposed to have this concave up shape to it. It's supposed to kind of look like the left side of a parabola, kind of like that. Um, and then we know it's still um, concave down. Excuse me. I think I said concave up. It's concave down from 0 to 3, so it still should have this kind of parabola shape. But we said from uh, basically 2 to infinity, the function keeps decreasing. And we said from 3 to infinity, the function becomes concave up. So now it's going to have this concave up shape. But again, it's approaching this horizontal asymptote. So your graph should look something roughly like that. All right, so again, uh, maybe not the most beautiful artistic rendition. Um, hopefully, I didn't misspeak too many times there. This should definitely be the correct graph. Um, you know, play with it. If you're having troubles, I would say pause it at the very beginning. Maybe it's too late now. Um, pause it at the very beginning. Try to work it out on your own. You can always compare your stuff to what I have here. Um, if you need to see some other videos, feel free to visit my website, justmathtutoring.com. Got tons of stuff on there, tons of calculus videos. If there's some other examples you'd like to see, let me know. I'll try to get them out there um, whenever I have time. All right, good luck, my friends out there. Take care.